Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto Tools and Time.com. Welcome back. Remember in our last video, we had this Ford Mustang that took care of the squeaky belt. Now we're on to another issue. Convertible top, not working. Let's get in there, confirm the customer's complaint, and see what we can do. Key on. Unlatch each side. Make sure you get the e-brake on. All right, I hear something going on in the back. As you can see, the top is not working. Let's get back there and see what's going on. While confirming the customer's complaint, we were able to tell that everything in the control circuit is working good. So there's no sense of going after any fuses or whatnot or schematics. We can hear the motor activating in the back. So now we got to get back there to it. Of course, it's always easier if it fails in the closed position but um if not this is the video for you and this next step is going to be a little hard for you guys to see but right on the driver's side right about here there's a button sometimes you get in there and push it with your finger like so and there's one on each side the passenger side i had to get with the screwdriver then you can take and pull your seat up Alright, if you come down inside the vehicle, you'll see you have two 10 millimeter retainers, one there and one there. Take and zip them out. Again, it's going to be a little hard to see this, but I'm going to take and lift up on a seat to remove it. Now that the back seat removed, you can see how easy the hydraulic pump is to get to. I want to check the fluid level. So we're gonna take and pull up on this pump just to pop it out of its rubber grommets, like so. And pull it off to the side. Now we have better access to this plug, which I'm gonna remove. All right, got that little bugger out. Now at this point, I'm gonna put a rag underneath here. I'm gonna tilt it upwards like this, just to make sure it's not low on fluid and see if the top actuates. All right, I'm gonna do it from the passenger side. All right, key on. I'm gonna tilt the assembly this way. tells you it's low on fluid why is it low on fluid i don't see anything obvious or wet down here along the lines so what i'm going to do to give you guys a better shot is i'm going to pull up one of these back panels on the side to, so we can look at the cylinders so we have a retainer clip here here uh, there's a couple small ones here and here and I believe if we come to the back side, we have another one right back here. All right, starting over here on the passenger side, I'm not gonna remove this 100%, because I think it's pretty obvious what we have going on. You can tell it's a little bit wet, but it looks like it's been over a long period of time. And you can tell a lot of it's coming from the cylinders, just a little bit of seepage. I'll take you over here to the driver's side without even pulling the cover off. Pretty similar to the passenger side. You know, they both got the same amount of time on them. So what would you guys do? A question I have for you guys is what would you do if this was your customer, if this was your car? Would you just simply top it off with fluid? See how long you get out of it? Keep an eye on it. You can see the cylinders from the top side here. If it gets any worse, replace the cylinders or should I schedule them back? and uh, just replace them proactively, you know. We have two options here. What would you guys suggest? For the time being, I'll do a courtesy refill for them. You wanna do this with the top down. Um, that's gonna put your fluid to the highest level. 
You know, as your cylinders go up, they're gonna use fluid. And then when it goes back down, the fluid is gonna return to this reservoir. So you never wanna fill it in the up position, otherwise it's gonna come back out. So with the top down, we can take and fill the fluid until it just starts coming out of this hole. As you see here, tells you the proper fluid to use. Refill with Dextron, ATF. So we have some fluid and uh, I use a small syringe. Pull this out of the way a little bit so you can get in there. All right, hopefully you guys got a good shot there. Like I said, I use a small syringe, put it in a hole. All right, there we go. At this time, I'm just gonna jump over to the passenger side. That way you guys can watch it cycle. I don't know if you heard it, kind of like a power steering pump when you have some cavitation, some air in the pump, you hear the gurgling. Ran it a couple times, you can tell the air is out of your system now. We're gonna take a look at the hoses and the, the cylinders to see if there's nothing pouring out of them and if they're still essentially dry with the um, contamination that we have already seen, then it's safe to say that that was a leak over time. However, it's still a leak. All right, so let's come over here after running it. And you see nothing really new. Uh, you see it's still the same dirt and grime. All right, then we come down. Everything looks good. Follow it up to the driver's side. I don't see any major wet spots. Let's see where we're at with this fluid. Yeah, we're, we're right there at the top. I can see it right below the hole. So I'm not going to add any more than that. I'm going to essentially just pop everything back together, put this plug back in the hole, pop the grommets back in its retaining bracket, reinstall that plastic cover, put the seats back in, and call it a day. Well, I'm going to keep this one short and sweet. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And what would you do? Would you just top it off with fluid, monitor it, Maintain the level, might be good for a while, might not be. But as you can see, there's no major leaks. So my best assumption is that it's just been slowly leaking over time. So we topped it off as a courtesy and I'll, I'll recommend some new cylinders. However, it's gonna be his call in the long run. Till next time guys, stay tuned.